temperatures this morning out of Yellowstone. The Yellowstone River is at its highest elevation in more than 100 years. Yellowstone, the enigmatic national park known for its colorful hot springs and vast geothermal systems, has recently started showing several signs, causing scientists to panic. These signs have made many experts and park rangers believe that the supervolcano at the heart of this national park will erupt at any moment. In addition to this, something new has begun to appear in Yellowstone, something that poses a different threat to the park and everyone in the surrounding regions. What are these signs that make scientists fear that the supervolcano will erupt? How bad will a Yellowstone eruption be? Also, what new threat has been spotted at Yellowstone National Park that is terrifying experts and citizens? Join us in this video as Yellowstone Park Ranger just revealed that something big happened inside Yellowstone. Yellowstone Park has finally shut down and something extremely weird is happening, and it's something you wouldn't even notice, even though it's going on right under your feet. On average, Yellowstone experiences approximately 1,500 to 2,500 earthquakes per year, and a lot of them can even be concentrated in a single week. But recently, there have been more and more earthquakes, closer together, and it's had park officials a little worried for a while. But now that we're seeing over 340 earthquakes, things seem to have taken a turn for the worst. It means that something is going on under the surface, and it's getting more serious as time goes on, which, when you talk about anything related to a volcano, is only an indication of catastrophe. You see, while we know Yellowstone as a dormant volcano, there are still low levels of activity going on in there, and with that massive caldera, even low levels of activity can add up fast. That's why what's happening now is worrying. If Yellowstone is experiencing such frequent tremors, it might mean that a major eruption is on the horizon. At this point, you might be thinking that the danger doesn't really seem that imminent, because no one's really talking about feeling that many earthquakes at Yellowstone, but that's just the thing. Most of the earthquakes the area receives are undetectable by humans, so the only way we even know they're happening is because we've got the technology to be able to pick up even the tiniest of seismic movements. But that doesn't mean that there will be a slow buildup to a massive earthquake or an even bigger eruption. No, those can come up seemingly out of nowhere and destroy everything before we'd even have the chance to react. And the worst thing about Yellowstone is that it's not just a volcano that's capable of some local damage. It's a supervolcano that can destroy the whole world. Supervolcanoes are geological features characterized by their immense size and potential for catastrophic volcanic eruptions. These eruptions are much larger and more powerful than typical volcanic events, often expelling thousands of times more material than a typical volcano. And Yellowstone is one of them. The Yellowstone caldera is the volcanic feature at the heart of the supervolcano. A caldera is a large, bowl-shaped depression that forms after a massive volcanic eruption empties the underlying magma chamber, causing the ground above to collapse. With all the smaller earthquakes, it's only a matter of time before the supervolcano gets to the point of an eruption. The ground might also experience deformation, where the surface rises or falls due to the movement of magma beneath. This deformation is measured using GPS and other monitoring techniques, and it's been obvious that something is going on. As magma moves and accumulates beneath the Earth's crust, it generates heat that can affect nearby hydrothermal systems. Hot springs, geysers, and steam vents are all part of these systems. An increase in the temperature of these hydrothermal features can suggest the intrusion of magma closer to the surface. The chemistry of hydrothermal fluids is intricately linked to the geological processes occurring beneath the surface. When magma interacts with groundwater or hydrothermal fluids, it can cause changes in the chemical composition of these fluids. This eruption is especially remarkable because of its sheer magnitude and the impact it had on the surrounding environment and beyond. The Huckleberry Ridge eruption likely unfolded in three distinct phases, occurring over the span of decades. Each phase involved the release of immense quantities of volcanic materials, including ash and pyroclastic flows. These phases of activity were marked by violent volcanic explosions, which is when the materials were ejected at high speeds into the atmosphere. But just as it might have seemed that things could never get any worse than this, they did. The Mesa Falls eruption is dated to approximately 1.3 million years ago and is notable as the second most recent caldera forming eruption from the Yellowstone hotspot. This event resulted in the formation of the Henry's Fork caldera, 
This caldera is located west of Yellowstone National Park, specifically in Idaho, and is a key feature in the landscape resulting from the volcanic activity. It was a substantial volcanic event, expelling an estimated volume of 280 cubic miles of material. Even though that's about half of what the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff eruption had expelled this magnitude, still places it among the largest known eruptions within the history of the Yellowstone hotspot. But the eruption's significance extends beyond its sheer size, as it contributed to the evolution of the Yellowstone Plateau volcanic field, which has played a pivotal role in shaping the unique geological features of the region. The resulting rock formation, known as the Mesa Falls Tuff, emerged through the compaction and welding of the layers of volcanic ash and fragmented rock. This process created a dense and substantial rock formation that has persisted through time. The eruption's ejected materials added to the volcanic deposits within the caldera, contributing to its growth. The result of this expansion is the Henry's Fork Caldera, which measures around 15.5 miles in width, which just added to how massive the overall volcanic features are in the area. The Lava Creek eruption stands out as a pivotal event in the history of the Yellowstone hotspot. It unfolded approximately 640,000 years ago and is recognized as one of the most substantial eruptions associated with the hotspot's activity. The magnitude of the Lava Creek eruption is staggering, with an estimated volume of around 500 cubic miles of material ejected. While this was less than the other two, it only added to the destruction they left behind. So it was like building on it, and the Lava Creek Tuff was formed. And that's what it looks like today too. But what would it really be like if Yellowstone had another supervolcano eruption right now? Well, to put it simply, absolute chaos. Supervolcano eruptions are fueled by the accumulation of vast amounts of magma underneath the Earth's crust. This magma can exert immense pressure, leading to the formation of a large shallow magma chamber beneath the surface. Since Yellowstone already has that covered, the initial signs of an impending supervolcano eruption would be next. These often include a significant increase in seismic activity, characterized by a series of earthquakes of varying magnitude. These earthquakes are indicative of the movement of magma and the adjustment of the Earth's crust to the growing pressure. And well, as we talked about at the beginning of this video, that's already happening. There's specifically been a noticeable shift in Yellowstone's volcanic activity since March 2018. The Mount Pinatubo eruption propelled significant amounts of sulfur dioxide gas and aerosols into the stratosphere. These particles remained suspended at high altitudes for an extended period. The aerosols from the eruption scattered sunlight leading to a cooling effect. The year following the eruption, 1992, witnessed global temperature anomalies with cooling all over. The cooling effects were noticeable, but less extreme than those caused by the Tambora eruption. There were localized temperature reductions of up to one to two degrees Celsius in some areas, but it was air travel that took the most significant hit here. Air travel throughout the region had to be suspended and it took months for things to go back to normal. But with that, it's also important to remember that volcanic ash is not only an inconvenience, but also poses health risks, particularly to individuals with respiratory issues, such as asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Inhaling fine ash particles can irritate the respiratory system, leading to breathing difficulties and exacerbating existing health conditions. Considering the world just fought a deadly pandemic that affected respiratory systems too, a lot of people in the world are already dealing with respiratory problems and this would ultimately make it much worse. Plus, as the ash settles, it can accumulate on surfaces both indoors and outdoors. This ash accumulation can create problems ranging from a thick layer of dust on streets and buildings to more significant structural issues. Ash can infiltrate ventilation systems, air conditioning units, and other mechanical components too. This can lead to blockages and reduced efficiency of these systems, affecting indoor air quality and temperature regulation. If Yellowstone goes through a supervolcanic eruption, now it'll just worsen, the climate change that we're already going through. So far, we've had extreme winters followed by extreme summers. If the winters get any colder, we'd immediately see the consequences. But what's worse is that the greenhouse effect in the duration of the colder times will just make it so, when the ash does eventually dissipate, we just see even hotter summers, which would be felt the most in the areas around the national park and the areas where the summers are already fairly hot. The world is already struggling to cope with climate change, 
Could this be the final nail in the coffin? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and like always, we'll see you in the next one.